Spring storms are on the way, and with them brings the possibility of power outages. Let's talk about the practical uses of smaller and, yes, more affordable portable power stations. We were inspired to do this video when we heard this on our NOAA weather radio. Storms should quickly become linear going into Friday evening, with primary hazards being wind gusts in excess of 70 miles per hour and a few quick spin-up tornadoes. Yep, they're pretty sure that tomorrow night is going to be a little bit rocking and rolling out there. But we had already figured out this spring was definitely on the way because several of our viewers last week said that they were right in the middle of a power outage that was from a spring-related storm. And a couple of them got back in touch with us and said that they were without power for more than 24 hours. We have been completely unabashed about our love in previous videos of having some portable power available when the lights go out. Uh, and it, I, we do think it's really important, but we've also had a lot of viewers that have said that's just beyond what their budget is going to allow. So we thought this was a really good opportunity because definitely of what we could be going through in about 24 hours from now, this was a great time to talk about some of the smaller units. They are definitely more affordable. We'll talk price points in just a second. Uh, the other thing, speaking of price point, is the fact that both of these units happen to be on sale right now for really great prices. This is the EBL 330. It's a 300 watt power station. It's on sale right now for 50% off. So normally it runs right around $300. And this is the Opus 600. Now we've never had this unit. This is a new to us unit. It's actually one of their earlier units. It'll supply a good amount of power for small items that you have in your house when you run out of power. Now stick with us through the video because Larry's gonna do a demonstration in just a bit, talk about the differences, similarities between the units and show you exactly what they'll power and how long they'll power those items for. The nice thing too is you don't always have to use these just in emergencies. Mm -hmm. You can use these throughout the year to save a little bit on your utility bill. Larry uses this one all the time, guys to run our vacuum cleaner. We got one of those small like stick vacuums that normally plugs into the wall. He plugs it into this and carries this unit around with the stick vacuum, making it kind of a portable vacuum cleaner to vacuum the floors with. Now we should mention that both of these were sent to us by the companies as samples. They will serve as our examples for this video. But before we go into the advantages, I think we have to just be really honest and talk about the fact that there are just a few small disadvantages of buying a smaller portable power station as opposed to one of the larger ones? Well, the most obvious is that they're not going to power heavy duty items like your microwave, your refrigerator, your freezers. These aren't made for that. One of the other drawbacks, I think, so to speak, is the fact that you're not going to get as much information on the readout on some of the smaller units, but you have to ask yourself, what is the information that you really need to know? Well, you need to know the capacity, you need to know how fully charged it is, yeah. and you need to know the draw that is coming out of the unit at that time, depending on what you have plugged into it that information is all going to be available on these units. For instance, on the EBL unit, it will show you the power consumption, but it won't give you the amount of time that it has left. Now the Opus will, it will tell you an estimated time that the battery is gonna last at the current draw. Both of these have a feature that I really like in power stations. They both have emergency lights. This one has a light on the front and the Opus has an emergency light built in on the back. Well, what's the first thing that you need when the power goes out at night? You need lighting. So once you get these area lights turned on, then you can see to plug additional lamps into these to provide light for the entire room. Smaller portable power stations are also going to have fewer outputs than the larger ones. For instance, the Opus has two electrical outputs. The EBL has one. They have less DC outputs, but they have enough to get you by. This one has a couple USB A's and a USB C. This one has actually three USB A's and a USB C. And they both have the ability to plug in anything that might run off of a cigarette cord. So they do give you some good options that maybe just not as many as a larger unit would have. 
Some of the heavy duty outputs that are also included in some of the larger units won't be included on the smaller ones as a general rule of thumb. On less expensive units, you may not have the most up-to-date battery technology. For instance, the EBL still uses the lithium ion battery. It's a perfectly good battery, but you don't get as many charges over time with this one. This one you may be looking at from 300 to 500 charges. Now the Opus has the lithium iron phosphate battery which can give you as many as a thousand charges before it gets to an 80% level. So this one will actually last quite a bit longer due to that battery formula that it has built into it. And finally, your options for what each of these units will power is less than the options available with the larger portable power stations. Of course, these will not power things like your microwave, your refrigerator, your freezers, uh, but they may power something like a small coffee maker. We actually have a little four cupper that this one will supply power for. We're gonna turn on the small four cupper here and let's see what it does. Ooh, it's, it's taking it right to the top. Look at that. It has finished brewing the four cups of coffee and the Opus is only down to 83%. I think that is really good for a small unit to be able to perk a nice pot of coffee. They'll also supply power to one of those small vacuum cleaners, but these won't supply power to like a shop vac that your larger units would supply power for. So what do we really, really like about smaller portable power stations? Because there is an awful lot to like, guys. Larry alluded to this just a little bit earlier, and that's the fact that if you have one of these, first of all, they are lightweight, somewhere between seven pounds for this one and maybe 17 pounds for this unit. So they're relatively lightweight. You can pick them up. They're pick up and carry power to wherever you want or need it in the house. And added to that, the fact that Larry just showed you a little bit ago, they have those emergency lights on them because first thing you want, lights go out, you want light. Yeah, the nice thing about them being portable is uh, they're small as well, so they can be stored easily. If you have an apartment or maybe you live in a, uh, you do a lot of traveling, maybe you have a travel trailer, these are great for camping. So they're not just for emergencies, these are great. I would take this one on a picnic and supply power maybe to a, a sound system of some kind. I mean, there's just so many options open to you when you have power at your fingertips. Let's take a look at what these units will power and how long they'll supply power for them. Okay, so we're starting the coffee pot out. The EBL is at 100%. This is a small four cup coffee maker. I turned the AC on. Nope, nope. It shuts down. So the EBL will not run the coffee maker. I'm in the garage. I'm going to test out our garage door opener on the Opus 600. I don't think the EBL would run it. But I've got to run back here and turn on the switch. And by golly, running at about 332 watts and there's the door well we're going to test to see if i can run the portable tv set here off of the evl okay let's see how the opus does with the little 24 inch portable TV set here. We're turning it on and it's starting to come up to power. So it's Losing also house and marriage. Then she found a wounded warrior project running at about 26, so I went online, 27 I signed up, watts. And I knew that wounded warrior project was definitely my new community. One of the things that you're going to want the most of when power goes out, especially at night is some lighting. So this light actually has four bulbs running right now at the same time. And so it is drawing 23 watts out of the Opus unit, and it will actually run with just 81% power, it'll run that for 12 hours. With the EBL hooked up to this lamp, it's showing 19 watts consumption. And there it is all lit up, that'll give you 
good lighting. You could hook several of these lamps up. You could actually light up an entire room using just this little power station. Even with the power out, you might want to enjoy some music. This little portable stereo will run quite a long time on the Opus. You're listening to the best of the best. AM 740, Toronto. Rogers Cable across Ontario at Channel 949. This is running now off of the EBL, and it's showing only 4 watts of power draw. This is Friday Night Bandstand with Brian Peroff on Toronto's AM740. When it comes to pass-through power, which is the ability of one of these units to be charging at the same time that you are using the unit in order to supply power to some things you need power for, this unit does not have pass-through power, but the Opus does have pass-through power, which we have used a number of times, especially in the middle of the summer. We've been charging at the same time we've been discharging the unit. I'll use it when it's outside and doing some solar charging to supply power to charge the battery on my e-bike so that way I'm bringing a hundred watts in here and I'm taking out some power and it's not going to deplete the battery as fast as you're using that pass-through power now this unit will not do that on 110 however you can run DC items the things that will run off of the 12 volt jack the USB ports that will work on pass-through just not the 110 the fourth advantage to these power units is actually really intuitive. They cost less money. Oh yeah, much less. <laughs> Full price, the EBL runs around $300. The Opus around $400. But remember, we're doing this video right now just specifically because both of these units happen to be on sale right now. And if you would like to get the solar panels, they each take 100 watt solar panels. EBL sells a set and Opus sells these for their units for around $250 and that's full price. There's actually three ways you can charge these. They come with a power bank that you plug into your 110. So you can be obviously charged off 110. You can also charge these with your car. So if you're traveling with these, you can have these plugged into your cigarette lighter and it will supply a charge while you're on the road. Now one additional way that this one can be charged, which is very unusual, if you have a USB-C cord, the USB-C port on this is also an input and you can bring in a charge that way as well. All right, let's talk about some practical applications other than like spring storm power outages. Well, if you if you like to do a lot of digital photography and you're you're out on the road, these can supply power to recharge your batteries. That's a great use for them. They're good for video shoots, photo mm -hmm. shoots. If you do drone photography where you have a drone up in the air, you can supply mm -hmm. power to charge those batteries when you're back at your camp in the evening. Uh, they can just there's just so many uses for these besides the emergency use. So they actually are very fun to own. So basically, these will supply power for two of the most important things that you need when the power goes out, and that's your lighting and your communications. They will not supply heating or cooling. They're just not big enough to support that need. But the, once again, if you, you want to know what's going on when a storm rolls through, how bad was it, how quickly is power going to be restored, these can supply power to your modem or your router or your TV set so that you can find out what's going on around you. If you'd like to see a larger unit in action, check out our video where we talked about the fact that we lost power. Our furnace went out on a night that was the coldest <laughs> night of the year. And we showed how we used our 2000 watt Opus in order to supply power for our furnace. That video is right over there.